What's up everyone, DP here with another hashtag ask DP question that has come up today. Uh, I'm answering two questions, uh, which I think go pretty good. Uh, the evaluation of evidence as it pertains to a disability claim to the Veterans Affair uh, Department or the, and rather, uh, the hire of two evaluations. So evaluation of evidence and the hire of two evaluations. Um, we're going to go over to the CFR and take a look at this. So this is the, e the ECFR. You can go online and find it. This is part four um, that we're looking at specifically here um, and looking at 4.6. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes we talk about this and folks tend to think, oh, you know, the VA is not going to factor in whatever I'm trying to claim. And that's actually incorrect. By law, if you look at this here, the element of weight to be accorded the character of the veteran service is but one factor entering into the consideration of the rating boards arriving at a determination. Every element in any way affecting the probative value, and that's one key point that I want to uh, highlight on here, the probative value to be assigned to the evidence in each individual claim must be thoroughly and conscientiously studied by each member of the rating board in light of the established policies of the VA. Um, to that, to the end that a decision will be equitable and just as contemplated uh, by the requirements of the law. Again, I'm pretty sure I butchered that stuff up here because trying to record and read uh, and see myself backwards is kind of interesting. However, the fact of the matter is that there's probative value in what you submit it. If the VA is not looking at your nexus letter, your medical opinion from your doctor, or what have you, uh, you have the ability to push back. Uh, don't be discouraged and think, oh, I can't file this claim or I don't have an argument to make because of the fact that, you know, my treatment wasn't at the VA. Incorrect. Medical evidence is medical evidence is medical evidence. Your service and things that are in there is one part, but there's another aspect that is required and needed, uh, specifically looking at the totality of how your claim is being put together. One thing that sometimes I think is uh, forgotten or neglected or not understood uh, is something called the Calusa Triangle. And I wanted to bring it up here because these are the main three things you really need when you're trying to file a claim to the VA. You want to have an in-service event or aggravation stressor. You want to have a current diagnosis and, of course, a nexus connecting these two things. This came from Calusa v. Brown and how they came about to look at the totality of how a claim can be put together. So when you're going to the put uh, a claim to the VA, right, you want to make sure you have a diagnosis. You want to make sure you have a nexus connecting those two. You've heard nexus letters and things like that, um, as well as the in-service event or, uh, or aggravation or stressor. So realistically, when you look at having a diagnosis, when you look at having that medical documentation, all these things have to be weighed in, not just alone what happened in service, but what are the connecting pieces? Where are you now? So I wanted to really highlight that one piece there because I think sometimes uh, it's forgotten or not known. So they have to evaluate your evidence. Bottom line, it's in the law. If they don't do that, or you see a denial letter and you don't see that your facts are listed there saying you submitted X, Y, Z, you can push back and say, wait a second, you didn't consider what I provided. Because on your denial letter, they actually have a listing of all the evidence they weighed in. So part of the rationale, they're saying, well, you don't have a diagnosis. Well, I do have a diagnosis. I did present that with my medical records. It wasn't reviewed, appeal. The second thing I wanted to look at here is the higher of two um, ratings. Uh, this is another one, uh, especially when it comes to certain conditions. Sometimes veterans don't understand or look at the law and say, well, I don't have all the symptoms at a certain range. And if you look here, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Where there is a question as to which of two evaluations shall be applied, the higher evaluation will be assigned if the disability picture is more nearly approximates the criteria required for that rating. Otherwise, their lower rating will be assigned, aka you're between a 50 or a 70, let's say for mental health. If you have a majority of your symptoms in the 50, but your overall disability picture, the totality of what you're dealing with is encroaching into the 70, 
then you have to speak about those things because sometimes folks will say, well, I don't have everything in the next bracket. And that's not true. It's really the, the total picture that they're looking at. So the higher of two evaluations is what they'll consider. So you can either, let's say, have a 50% rating or a 70% rating. Bottom line here is simply, if you are dealing with something or you have symptoms, talk to all of your symptoms. Don't try to rate yourself. Don't try to say, well, my symptoms are only this bracket, so I'll only speak about this. That's not your job. Raters rate, right? Examiners, examiners, and veterans speak their truth. Raters rate, examiners examine, and veterans speak their truth. So your job as a veteran or your spouse or your loved one who is a veteran, their job is to speak their truth. The examiner the CMP is there to examine, and the rater will rate. It's not the veteran's job to examine themselves. It's not the veteran's job to sit here and try to rate themselves. It is the veteran's job to speak the truth of what they are dealing with. Again, two key points here, evaluation of evidence and the higher of two evaluations. Uh, I hope this was helpful and insightful. If there's more information like this or questions that you have, definitely feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the comment section. Uh, this is part of our Ask DP um, uh, series. So our hashtag Ask DP uh, question series, answering the questions that you have. So keep asking them and we'll keep answering. DP out.